Welcome back to another edition of Inside Rebel Football. Jim Norris, your host. It's week six. Goodness gracious alive, uh, Coach. It, it's, 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 rolling by and it, it's rolling by and, and, and we're on a roll. We're halfway through the regular season, but you're right. The Rebels are on a roll. Well, the thing we've done is we've, uh, we've improved from week to week. Uh, I can see a great improvement in our offense. Uh, I think our secondary has gotten better. Uh, defensive front, front six, front seven, whatever, we, whatever we, scheme <laughs> we happen to, to have in time. there. Yeah, at that time, uh, we knew those guys would be very good because they were good last year and uh, got back off of injuries and uh, just had a great spring and a great summer, and uh, we felt like we'd be really good up front defensively, and uh, that's kind of that's kind of been the case. We can just keep them healthy. That's the big thing. Well, it certainly has been the case, the case, coach. Uh, the great was it the great American rivalry? That's what it was called. That's that's right. And uh, you came we, out on top again. We resumed that last year when we played Neville, and uh, prior to that, the last time we had played in it was in 10, 2010. and uh, we had a pretty good quarterback at that time. Yeah, who, who was the star of the game or uh, the hero it, of the it, past? He's one of those Turner boys. His name was, <laughs> was Paul Turner, yeah. and uh, it's proven that he's a pretty good football player. He's uh, he's been with several. NFL team yeah. recently, and uh, you had a nickname for him. I called him the franchise. Well, he he was the franchise <laughs> back then. I remember when he broke one, that old head he'd cock that head back. When he cocked that head back, I he mean, was he over. Was, it was sailing. <laughs> you I don't knew. think anybody ever caught him. I don't think anybody caught him either. Well, uh, you know, it, I remember one of the, one of the plays that sticks out in my mind. Must have been about eight or seven or eight somewhere in our way, uh, and we're playing. Uh, 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 St. Thomas Moore. St. Thomas Moore at their place. And he's a sophomore. And, and we're, we're and down. We're getting, we're getting our hiney whipped bad. We're down. And he runs the kickoff back for a touchdown. And that changed the entire complexion of the game. Just like that. We got that momentum and we never let it go. You're right. That's, that, what, a, what a great, a sign great of, run that was. A uh, sign of things to come for him. That's right. It surely was. And he scored a bunch of them. He, boy, did he ever. Mm -hmm. Paul Turner, he's a good one. He was the Hall of Fame recipient for he that game? He was the recipient for the uh, Great American Rivalry Series, and they, and they want someone that's actually played in that game before, and that's the reason we went back and chose Paul because, again, prior to last year, that was the last time that we played was in 2010, played when, Neville. When's the last time Neville was beaten us, uh, in, in, for real? I, I, I don't know. It's been a long time. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a Don Chow's. You know, <laughs> I don't keep up with that stuff. <laughs> Don had a pad. <laughs> he probably pulled it out of well, his Well, the last time uh, prior to this that we'd beaten him, I think, was in 10, in 2010. Because we didn't play, we didn't continue that series, the Great American Rivalry, after that after that year of 2010. But I still don't know when the last time they beat us, when it counted. I know it's been a while since we played them, but I, I can't remember. But uh, uh, let, let's go to 29 to 14. Uh, you had okay. to feel great about the way your defense played, your offense played, and, and, and even when things would get close, when you seemingly had the game in hand, your team seemed to respond and, and, and kind of rise to each well, and every you, challenge. You know, a, a team like Neville, I mean, we, we have the utmost respect for them. We really do because it is such a great rivalry, and, and it's, it, it's, it takes one or two plays to change the momentum sometimes. And uh, they can get on a run and get that momentum changed. And, you know, the same thing happened to them, I think, the first ball game. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not that much worse a team than Ruston. They play again, Neville yeah. might win the game. You're right. But, but it was a series of turnovers and fumbles early in the game. And I think Ruston uh, uh, recovered a couple of touchdowns and very favor uh, a couple of fumbles or interceptions yeah. in favorable position. When you do that and you've got a short field, uh, you're going to put points, a lot of points on the board with a short field. And I think that happened, and they could, never could right the ship. Well, what did you think? What were some of the keys uh, the other night? You know, I look at 300 yards rushing for the Rebels, over 300 yards, and you held uh, a team that loves to run the football that's good at it to minus 29 yards on 28 carries. That, that That's that's mind-boggling. Well, it is, but we also know that, that uh, they got in a situation where they had to throw the ball a lot. And when you do that, we were able to get pressure on them and, and get, a, get several sacks and, and some tackle for losses. And that yardage, that negative yardage, is, is subtracted from, from the, the rushing rush. yardage. So that, that certainly helps. Well, it, it did help, but that's one of the most elusive quarterbacks you'll ever see. 
and he never escaped the pressure you guys put on him. Well, uh, our, our, our outside guys run pretty well, and we get good push up inside. If you can, if you can get the kids ever ever thinking their mindset, it's not to always sack the quarterback, but to contain him and get the push inside, and that's what we try to do. And and, and our outside guys run well. Well, things got uh, close at the end of the first half. Then you kind of uh, extended the lead, and then they got close again. It was 22-14. It, 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 it's third down and eight. The Rebels are probably going to run the football, and we run the old tall sweep, pick it up, and the next thing you know, we're headed towards the end zone. That well, was a our, big play. Big, our big offensive drive. line is, has, uh, has improved so much. It's easily the most improved group on the field, on the team. And, uh, of course, we knew Cam Wright had a great year last year and uh, utmost confidence in, 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 uh, uh, in Garrett Commons, and what a great job he's done. He just keeps getting better and better. And, uh, you know, we talked about all through the summer, let's go back and see if we can, can uh, play a little smash mouth football, get in that eye formation, see if we can run the football when we, want to, when we need to run the football. And uh, as long as we can keep doing that, it shortens the game. But the big thing is it keeps our defense on the sideline. And those guys are rested usually when we go in there, and now they're going to play that much better. And that's, that's a pretty simple recipe. Yeah, but it's uh, it, it's it's harder to do than, than it might seem. I mean, it is. This past week, you, you played a couple of really good teams. You had that huge, 99-yard drive last uh, week against Knoxville County too. So, uh, it's just been uh, the offense kind of taking over when they needed to, running it, like you say, when you have to run it. Well, I think I think our coaches have done a great job of coaching. There's no doubt about it. And uh, you know, again, they're all on the same page. They're they're committed to. This is what we're going to do, and they get out there and they coach it every day. We work on fundamentals every day. We work on techniques, and we go against each other. Not a whole lot. We'll, we'll get some collisions, but but, uh, but a couple of days a week, we're going to go good on good uh, in, in inside-type drills, running the football, and us defensively trying to stop it. I know we're just about out of time for this segment. How fun was it the other night? Well, that's the reason I still love to coach. Games <laughs> like that, that's the reason we still coach. Well, it was fun to watch. Wonderful. It was. Well, Coach, uh, that'll do it uh, for the first uh, segment of Inside Rebel Football. But stay with us. We'll come back and talk with you at the end of the show. So uh, you stay tuned, too. and We'll be right back with more Inside Rebel Football right after this timeout. Thanks, Jim. Sanson Family Medicine, 32 of the best, most dedicated medical professionals in the area. Assembled in a state-of-the-art medical clinic with in-house x-ray, lab, EKG, and more. We treat your whole family, from geriatrics to pediatrics, in their own building. And women's health, from a woman's perspective. We treat everything, from sniffles to broken bones, from acute care to physicals and immunizations. Your complete clinic for the whole family, seven days a week. Sanson Family Medicine, 2309 Arkansas Road, West Monroe. The Home Improvement Outlet keeps you building for less. Right now at the Home Improvement Outlet, get all new GE appliances. Packed with refrigerator, freezers, oven, microwave, in stainless or in black or white. The Home Improvement Outlet is your GE showcase dealer. Get 12 months interest-free financing or the no credit check option is available. We also carry major name brands like Frigidaire and Samsung. The Home Improvement Outlet can improve your home for less. The Home Improvement Outlet keeps you building for less. Hey, Louisiana, do you want a great deal? Talk to Jim Taylor. He can make it real in a Chevy. At Jim Taylor Chevrolet, the Chevy Silverado is the right tool for the job to get tools to the job, big or small. With plenty of cargo room, extended cab, towing capacity of 13,000 to 14,500 pounds, available easy lift and lower tailgate, and a 6-liter V8 engine. You won't work harder, you'll work smarter. See your success with Jim Taylor Chevrolet in Ravel. Build something unique. Find new roads. The Graduate Shop has been serving Northeast Louisiana schools for over 50 years. We provide the highest quality class rings, letter jackets, graduation announcements and accessories, as well as caps and gowns. The Graduate Shop enjoys celebrating special recognitions with our schools, especially when they win a state championship ring. We strive to provide the best service to our schools and families as they capture these special memories. The Graduate Shop, serving our community with quality graduation products. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football. It's time to talk a little offense, and we we finally have back uh, with us after what a four or five week absence. Yeah. Uh, guys filling right. in, 
offensive coordinator, uh, Glenn Hunt. Do you still work with the offensive line, though? Every day. Every day? Every day. I, I knew you did. <laughs> for some reason, I knew you had to work with an offensive line. Got uh, to. Coach, uh, thanks for being back on the show, and, and congratulations on a, on a big-time win uh, against uh, Neville High School last Friday night. It was. It was a very physical game. I texted my, uh, the old line on Saturday and just asked them how they felt, and they all said that they were sore. So we, we gave them some ice baths on uh, Sunday. <laughs> but we played extremely well up front. I thought uh, the best that we had played all year, and we knew it was going to take that type of effort uh, for us to be able to win the game. Well, it uh, certainly was a big-time effort. You know, you had some uh, guys that rushed for a lot of yardage in the game, over 300 yards combined. But really, I felt like, and I think you guys said it uh, after uh, the game, that the offensive line was really the star of the game, and we gave them. Okay. Uh, our uh, players of the game, all the offensive linemen. Well, I, you know, that's what I told uh, Stanley afterwards. I, I just thought uh, with our pass protection, we challenged them from the week before. They responded and then being able to run the football. And I thought the biggest point in the game was, uh, was 22-14. We get the ball at our 20-yard line and we drive it. 30. Well, I love 38. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the toss. 38. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about yeah. that drive, Oh, yeah, right? that drive, yeah. 38, you're only up by a score. Right. And if you don't get it, at third and eight, on pump. your own end of the field, right. you got to give them the football back. That's right, and uh, our guys did a great job. You know, we got a great fullback. He, he's one of the best fullbacks we've had in a long time, and that's Caden Pierce. He does such a great job of blocking. Uh, he can catch the football, and uh, he just does so much for us, and uh, he had a great block on that play. Boy, he certainly did. Uh, it was a great play, really kind of uh, got the Rebels a uh, kick started uh, to that uh, scoring drive that really put the game away. Well, tell us uh, – or introduce to us the players you brought with you tonight. All right, to my left is number 59. He plays uh, X guard and Y guard. That's Daniel Hawthorne. Uh, he started some games last year. He's starting this year. Uh, we got three guys that are rotating at the two guards positions, and those guys are doing a great job. And then to his left is number seven, uh, Zach Murphy. He's a senior. Uh, you know, he's a punt returner, kick returner. He plays our slot receiver for us and uh, just does a great job. Uh, he's getting better every week. And, and both these guys I've known a long time. Daniel and my daughter have gone to school together since they were kindergarten. Okay. And he's been my neighbor since uh, he's in, <laughs> been in kindergarten. Well, how about that? Well, guys, uh, welcome to the show. You ready for the uh, rapid fire round? Uh, yes, sir. Who yes, goes sir. first? Yeah. All I'm, right. I'm the senior. All, All right. right. Well, the senior gets to pick. All right, Dan, you're, you're up. Look at the camera with the red light on. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Best offensive lineman ever to play at West Monroe. I gotta say, my brother, he he played on the offensive line, so I can't say well, anybody. Well, else. give him a plug. Tell us his name. Tyler Hawthorne. All right, Tyler Hawthorne. Smile or game face? Game face. Least favorite subject? Probably math. Batman or Superman? Batman. Favorite snack? Skittles. How many pancake blocks? Speaking of snacks, do you have this year? About seven. If you scored a touchdown and could do a touchdown dance, we want to know what it would look like. Icky shuffle. Icky shuffle. Oh, icky shuffle. All right, Zach, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, number seven. Slot receiver, Zach Murphy. Best receiver ever to play at West Monroe? Jairus. Favorite pass route? Uh, same. Sweet or sour candy? Sour. Favorite college team? TCE. Call or text? Text. Favorite vegetable? I don't eat vegetables. Broccoli. <laughs> How big is West Monroe's offensive playbook? Oh, it's huge. And how much will we see of it Friday night? All of it. All right, good deal. <laughs> guys, uh, well, uh, thanks for being on the show. It's great to have you guys. Uh, Daniel, uh, you had a brother you mentioned that played in the program. Uh, what's it been like following his footsteps and getting to play at West Monroe High School? It's been amazing. I couldn't have think of any better opportunity I had than to follow in his footsteps and to play on this offensive line. What tips did he give you? You know, the older brother who's been through the program, what tips did he give you about uh, playing football at West Monroe High School when you look back on it? Give everything you have and don't take a playoff. Okay, pretty that's good, good advice. advice. Uh, yes. Uh, hey, Coach, that's something that uh, the coaches uh, remind the players of each and every day. That's right, play as hard as you can each and every play. Zach, uh, a senior, uh, and you actually live next to Coach Hunt? Yes, sir, he's my neighbor. Can you tell us uh, what that's been like over the years? Don't get home late, uh, <laughs> and if you are home late, you're going to hear about it. <laughs> you got to keep an eye on you, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Uh, well, well, Zach, tell me, what's it been like uh, playing this year for the Rebels, and, and where do you feel like the team is right now? 
Uh, I feel like we're we're pretty good right now. We have a lot of room to improve, which is scary for anybody trying to play us. That's true. And uh, I think we're going to be dangerous. You know, and, and Coach, I think that's right. I mean, you guys have uh, really established the run over the last several weeks. Right. But uh, you talked about this receiving core being uh, one of the best you've ever right. coached, top to bottom. And if that passing game really gets uh, off and going, this offense could we, be scary. We could be, and and we're going to be there. It, you know, early on it was pass protection uh, giving us some issues. The other night, you know, we had a couple of drops. Garrett's throwing the ball extremely accurate right now. And it's just, I hope it's Friday night when this offense truly does explode because it's coming. Yeah. Uh, Zach, big, big showdown. You got to go over to James Field and play the Rustin Bearcats. Uh, you know, what do you expect? What's, what's it going to take to beat those guys? Uh, we're going to have to be focused. We know that they're going to come out jacked up on Mountain Dew, as Coach Adams would say. <laughs> jacked up on what now? Mountain Dew. <laughs> yes, sir. That's his favorite quote. Uh, we, we just got to play smart and, uh, like Daniel said, give everything we got, and we'll be all right. Who's the, who's the toughest guy you go up against in practice uh, in, in the defensive backfield? You got yeah. Tony Osmond here, so he's taking notes. Uh, as in DB or like Yeah, as in DB. Uh, probably Brad Williams. Brad Williams? Yeah, I think he's going to be on the show. He's definitely on the that show. That must be why you said that tonight. <laughs> no, I said that because he's hard to block. <laughs> uh, and, and, of course, uh, the, the same thing. Uh, Daniel, who's the toughest guy? You know, you go up against probably one of the best defensive lines every single day. What's it like going up against those guys in practice? It's tough, but it makes you a lot better in the end because you're going against the tough talent. And any little thing you do wrong is going to show, and so you have to do your best or you're not going to block them. You know, and coach, you know, I think about it. We've uh, looked at this defensive line, and a lot of people have talked about them, but that really helps you guys on the offensive uh, front getting to see these guys I'm, every I'm day. just glad on Friday nights we don't have to block them. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, we'll get in, and me and Coach Bear, Coach Bear and O-line coach, we'll talk about it. Like, you know, I, I don't know what you would do because all, each and every one of them is so talented, man. Uh, you know, Swanner and no, Alvin, we, I mean, and then, uh, Gleason and Malcolm Moore, man, it's just extremely tough blocking those guys uh, on, on a uh, consistent basis. You know, every now and then we may get in their way a little bit, but as far as consistently, uh, consistently blocking them, we can't do it. Well, you guys do a little bit better than get in their way. How, how do you feel like your offense uh, is coming around this year, Coach? I'll tell you what, for, as far as the effort uh, and, and these kids doing what we've asked them to do, I couldn't be prouder or more pleased. Uh, as a coaching staff with these uh, young men, you know, we were young and inexperienced, but that's over with. It's time for us to step up and be the offense that I know and this coaching staff knows that they can be. Well, uh, guys, I think uh, the sky's the limit offensively for you guys and as a team as well. Uh, Zach, any, any last thoughts before Friday night? Go Rebels. Go Rebels. Thank Go Rebels. You. All right. I, uh, hope, I hope we pack out our side of the stadium. Well, I got a feeling we're going to do that. Good. Guys, it's going to be a big, uh, big time game. Should be a big time atmosphere. Zach Daniel, thanks for being on the show, and good luck Friday night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a break and be back with more Inside Rebel Football in just a moment. When you're down for the count and there's no way out, call Sam. Call Sam. Because there's things we can do to get you back on straight and true. Call Sam. Kilpatrick's provides guidance to create meaningful ceremonies to honor the life of your loved one. You'll receive exactly what you selected. Others may offer you one thing and provide another. Your family's interest is our first priority. We offer individualized services to fit any need. Kilpatrick's provides service, facilities, and prices second to none. Kilpatrick Serenity Gardens offers many beautiful settings. Choose wisely. Choose Kilpatrick's. I'm sick and I need to see a doctor right away. You don't want to sit and wait and wait and wait and wait to be worked in. Hello? At Sanson Family Medicine, you're welcome to make an appointment, but you don't need one. Walk-ins are welcome. From pediatrics to geriatrics, open seven days a week. I'm actually seeing a medical professional. Sanson Family Medicine, 2309 Arkansas Road, West Monroe. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football. I've got the defensive coordinator, we call him T.O., Tony Osmond. 
He's joined us to talk a little defense. And, Coach, uh, welcome back to Inside Rebel Football. We've missed you like uh, we'd have uh, Coach Hunt for a few weeks. Well, thanks, Judge. We missed you, too. Okay. We're glad to be back. It's good, uh, good to have you. And it's always good to have you back after a, a big-time win. What was it, the great American rivalry? You guys came out on top. Wasn't that, a, wasn't that just huge? It was a big game. It was a fun game to watch, a fun game to call, too. It was a fun game to coach in, and I'm sure it was a fun game. For these game guys, for these guys, a, a fun play. game to play yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. but those are the kind of battles that you want to play week to week. But you want to break somewhere in there because <laughs> now we're coming up on another one that's just like it. And, uh, you know, we need a little break, but we can't take it yet. I agree with that. You know, sometimes you talk about these big games and you build it all up, but they don't, they don't live up to the hype. I, I think that one – uh, kind of lived up to the hype and, and to the rivalry. No doubt. You know, uh, I don't. I, I think back, of course, I, I've only played Neville as a coach four or five times, uh, counting Jamboree. So I don't, I don't know the whole history other than what I've been told. But I do know that every game has, uh, has been a war. And it's, uh, you know, Neville's a well-coached team. And their kids are going to play hard year in and year out. And... Uh, we like that game because, you know, it prepares us. It shows what, where we're weak and the things that we need to work on. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, your run defense the other night was outstanding. Well, that's, uh, that's Jerry and, and uh, Mark Ware and Coach E and, and Rob with the linebackers and Dino Casola. You know, they're, they're more involved in the run. We're involved in it somewhat. But I tell you what, uh, just like Glenn said, I would hate to have to be blocking them down after down because that's, uh, that's six pretty good uh, athletes and talent up there. Well, it certainly is. It got some talent in the secondary, too. I know you spent a lot of time uh, with these guys, and you brought a couple of safeties with you, I think. I did. I, I brought junior, uh, two juniors. Number six, uh, Brad Williams, plays free safety for us. Uh, both of the kids uh, that I'm introducing, uh, players that I'm introducing, mm -hmm. had shoulder injuries uh, you know, uh, last year Brad had surgery, and uh, Brooks had double surgery in the off season. So uh, both of them have been injured, and uh, Brad didn't get to play early on last year. He was coming back from surgery, and so uh, he was kind of a late bloomer for us as a tenth grader. Brooks played through the year with shoulder straps and had surgery at the end, and, and uh, Brooks played strong safety force number four. Well, guys, uh, welcome to the show, and it, it doesn't appear that uh, there are any ill effects from whatever shoulder problems you've had. You guys have played at a, at a high level. Yes, sir. Uh, Y'all ready for the rapid-fire round? Yes, sir. Who's yes, sir. first? Brooks. Me. Brooks is, Brooks is first. All right, well, let me, let me change the order up. All right, Brooks, uh -oh. uh, number four, safety, West Monroe. Uh, look at that camera with a red light. How many picks will you get this year? Um, all of them. <laughs> Favorite song? Ooh, uh, anything by Three Days Grace. Cheetos or Doritos? Cheetos. Last person you texted? My mom. Nike or Adidas? Adidas. Favorite sports movie? Friday Night Lights. If you could play any other position, what would you choose? Receiver. All right, Brad, you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Intercept the pass or level a big hit? Interception. Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. Favorite cartoon as a kid? Tom and Jerry. Least favorite food? Broccoli. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. First sport you ever played? Football. If you played for any NFL team, who would it be? The Browns. Cleveland sure. Browns. All right, guys. Uh, uh, enjoyed that. Well, well Brooks, uh, take me through. How, and how many interceptions do you have on this season? Five right now. Wow. What What's the key uh, to getting so many interceptions? You've only played five games. You're averaging a pick a game. Yes, sir. Uh, I really couldn't tell you what the key is. Some, it, I mean, it just happens. I mean, Brad, one of them, Brad knocked up in the air, and I was just kind of there. And the other is the D-line rushes the quarterback so fast that the quarterback just has to get rid of it. I'm just there. Well, Coach, one of the things that he has that most DBs don't have is good hands. He doesn't drop too many. That's correct. He does have good hands, and, uh, you know, he, he alluded to the fact that if he wasn't a DB, he'd be a receiver. You know, as a, as a freshman, he played a little running back, receiver, caught punts, those kind of things, and I believe Brad did a little bit of that too. Well, Brad, uh, when I think about you, I guess the first thing that comes to mind 
uh, McGill Tulin. Game's on the line. I think it's what the last play of the game. It's in overtime, and they've got a score to win. And, and take me through that play. Well, I knew it was fourth down, and they had to get in the end zone, and they were running trips. And the quarterback was scrambling, and I saw him point up in the air. And so I looked back in the end zone, and there was two receivers, and I was like, well, I'm just going to get on the front one because he's throwing off his back foot. And sure enough, he just threw a little – I didn't pass, and I knocked it out of the sky, and we won. Oh, did it. And, and then uh, just it was bedlam after that. Uh, what was the feeling like after that game? Oh, it was great. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Every uh, W feels great. Yeah. Well, great. And, and, and particularly that one. But, but Coach, uh, it's interesting. As, as Brad described what was going through his mind, I mean, uh, he's thinking all the while while he's trying to make that play. That's, uh, that's correct. And I actually had them in the wrong coverage, and so uh, Brad kind of made up for it. Uh, two of the receivers in the trips dr dragged across the field. Brad went with the first one. Nobody went with the second one. Luckily, we rushed him out of the pocket. He scrambled right. The receivers broke back to the middle, and the other one had kind of sat down there, so they had actually came back to the same place, and uh, Brad broke that pass up. So it was a good play on his, his part. It certainly was. Uh, Brooks, we've uh, named you twice. Uh, early in the season as the defensive uh, player of the game. You've really – you've had uh, two games with two picks each or – I think just one. Just one? Knocks me. Um, the other night uh, against Neville, what uh, what helped them be successful throwing the ball late in the game after you basically just made them one-dimensional? Um, that game, we didn't have much depth because we lost Zach Martin, which is a huge loss for us. So we kind of got a little tired there towards the end, but I think – in the fourth quarter, we stepped it up better than we did in the third quarter. We well, certainly did. And, Coach, that's something that uh, really Neville had to do uh, once you made right. them one-dimensional. They couldn't run the ball. Right. And so you knew they were going to come and throw. What, what was your mindset at that point? Well, you know, we wanted the clock to keep running was our <laughs> mindset. And uh, we wanted to, you know, just defend the pass the best we could. Uh, probably should have blitzed a little more when they put the Brister kid in. Uh, which puts a little more pressure on the on the DBs, but it also makes him get rid of it a little quicker. If you'll remember, he got to sit back there two yeah. or three seconds finding his receivers, and uh, that that uh, that makes it a little easier to complete passes. Well, it certainly does. Uh, Brad, how good is this Bearcat football team? You got to go there Friday night. I'm not sure about their interior, but I know their exterior is. They're pretty good. They're pretty good, but we're better. And Brooks, what's going to be the key over James Field Friday night for the Rebels? Uh, keeping the quarterback in the pocket and just staying with our receivers is while the uh, quarterback's running around. <laughs> you know, Coach, what strikes me about these two is we're just about out of time. They're juniors, but they just seem like uh, they're mature beyond their years football-wise. Well, you know, communication's a key part of football, and uh, we stress that every day, and they're becoming – Pretty good communicators. Uh, I told them they can't get married unless they <laughs> communicate, so they're getting better. All right. Well, guys, uh, I know marriage is not on the horizon anytime soon, but uh, thanks for being on the show, and, and best of luck Friday night over in Ruston. Thank you. Coach, Sorry. hang around. We're going to look at some highlights of West Monroe's victory against Neville when we come back right after this. The Graduate Shop has been serving Northeast Louisiana schools for over 50 years. We provide the highest quality class rings, letter jackets, graduation announcements and accessories, as well as caps and gowns. The Graduate Shop enjoys celebrating special recognitions with our schools, especially when they win a state championship ring. We strive to provide the best service to our schools and families as they capture these special memories. The Graduate Shop, serving our community with quality graduation products. Hey, Louisiana, do you want a great deal? Talk to Jim Taylor. He can make it real in a Chevy. This Chevrolet Silverado is made of high-strength steel, not aluminum. We start with a roll-formed steel pickup box floor that's stronger, lighter, and more durable than a traditional stamped steel bed. Nine cross members provide lateral support. Hydraulic body mounts enhance comfort while hauling, towing, and tackling rugged terrain. This technology is the newest revolution in tough. See it for yourself at Jim Taylor Chevrolet in Ravel. Lead the pack. Find new roads. 
Sanson Family Medicine, 32 of the best, most dedicated medical professionals in the area. Assembled in a state-of-the-art medical clinic with in-house x-ray, lab, EKG, and more. We treat your whole family, from geriatrics to pediatrics, in their own building. And women's health, from a woman's perspective. We treat everything, from sniffles to broken bones, from acute care to physicals and immunizations. Your complete clinic for the whole family, seven days a week. Sanson Family Medicine, 2309 Arkansas Road, West Monroe. The Home Improvement Outlet keeps you building for later. Right now at the Home Improvement Outlet, get all new GE appliances packed with refrigerators, freezers, ovens, microwaves, in stainless or in black or white. The Home Improvement Outlet is your GE showcase dealer. Get 12 months interest-free financing or the no credit check option is available. We also carry major name brands like Frigidaire and Samsung. The Home Improvement Outlet can improve your home for less. The Home Improvement Outlet keeps you building for less. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football. It's time to look at some of those uh, outstanding highlights. West Monroe against Neville. And who do we have queued up first? I think offense. offense. Oh, yeah. on offense. Anytime right. you're here, they go offense. That's right. What's that all about? 16 straight years that I've been here, it's been <laughs> offense first. That's right. It's tradition. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go. Uh, a lot of highlights. Uh, West Monroe against Neville. Uh, this was the uh, third play of the game. Uh, we'd got a pass interference call. We, we were going to take a shot early in the game. I like that call. Right, and then this right here is just a toss, and uh, you'll be able to see uh, on the different angle, uh, he gets his face mask grabbed. We don't block it exactly right. We don't down block, uh, but what a great cut by Cam to make a guy miss. But we had a great job. Watch T.J. Bush pull, and then Preston Crane, this uh, the tight end on this side. T.J.'s playing where? At the left guard right left here guard. pulling, and then Caden Pierce had a great block. Look at T.J. Oh, run through that, that linebacker. Wow. That's a great job, great job by Caden, and uh, that was a 58-yard touchdown. Why are y'all so successful running the toss week? We've always, it's ever, we've always, since I've been here, the toss has been a great play. And when I became coordinator, that was our number one play. Uh, this is Garrett on a scramble. It's a 16 yards. Uh, we had great protection. They uh, they did a good job in their their coverage uh, up top. He, he had a chance to throw the bubble. He just didn't feel good about it, and uh, so he pulls it down. And a great job by Garrett there, scrambling and getting 16 yards. And that's one thing Garrett's done. He's not going to force it. He's going to pull it down if it's if he doesn't feel good about it and run. This is a, uh, a quarterback draw. It's a read. Nobody goes with Cam. He probably should have thrown it out here. But the backer blitz, and he does a great job of, uh, of running and gaining uh, 14 yards. Very tough running. But he's reading that near side backer. Cam's running. He doesn't adjust. We throw it to Cam out here and uh well, and later surprised. on we ran it and the backer goes with cam and he throws it to cam <laughs> he should have ran the draw that time but that's, okay. that's garrett he did a great job this is a uh, garrett we knew early in the game we were going to throw seams we we're going to run caden down the hash and rylan green down the the hash and uh because in the jamboree we noticed that their safeties were looking into the backfield wasn't paying attention to our tight ends or our h back so we knew early on that we was going to take a shot at it. What a job the sophomore did to get in the end zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. He wanted job. to score. You he, could yes, tell. he was extremely excited. Uh, this is a cam on the option. Uh, had it earlier. Uh, had a misread, but that's okay. It happens when you run the option. It happens so fast. You're going to have some misreads. But a great job by Garrett. And we were one guy away of, of busting a big one there. But that was an eight-yard gain for uh, cam. This is Garrett on the uh, on the power read. We're reading uh, uh, that defensive end. Well, it's not the read. We're trapping it. It's a great uh, run by Garrett, 11 yards. Uh, Blake had a great block. Uh, we're going to pull instead of reading that defensive end and reading him. We're just uh, trap him and run Garrett inside of it because our linebackers were running out of there. So let's just trap it and and hit it inside. This is in the second half. This is Cam on the toss. This is when we went to too tight to, to finish the game. Uh, this is uh, midway through the third quarter. This was a two-play drive. This was the first play. It's a 17-yard run. Great job. I want you all to watch Caden Pierce. He's uh, a fullback. Fullback. He's going to hit this guy standing up outside of uh, Rylan Green right here. It's number 23. Boom. It's a great job by Caden. He's just such a, a selfless uh, player. 
and it's a great job by TJ and Big Baby getting 15 yards downfield, getting up on the safety. And this was the next play. This is Cam on the toss. The same way, again, Caden gets a pancake. Wow. You can see Baby downfield blocking the safety. And a great run. I didn't think he was going to get in. He was wore out. I didn't think he was going to get in here. And we tell him, don't reach for the end zone <laughs> unless it's fourth down. And because stuff like that, if we're on the road in the playoffs, we may not get that call. But yeah, it was a touchdown. Touch yeah. That's right. Uh, this is Pierce on the, uh, this is the, the other look. And uh, just a gr great tough running by him. You can look at Garrett getting down there with him. And uh, this was a big touchdown right here. Cam had what, almost 180 yards? Yeah, 175 yards on 19 carries. Uh, we wanted to hit them inside a little bit just to keep them honest. You can see their linebackers are walking outside for the toss. So we had to sneak the fullback in there to, just to keep them honest. And uh, this was a 13-14 yard gain right here by Caden Pierce. You can see their linebackers have walked out. Yeah. That brings so, back old memories. It does. <laughs> it does. And uh, and so they were just playing for the toss and the F. So we hit, now you can see their linebackers are back inside. Just that one run makes them play honest. And now this is Cam on the toss. This was the third this A play. A play of the game That's in right. my mind. Great job by Caden. And uh, just a super run. He was about that two inches away from – Staying in bounds, just a great run, great balance by uh, but Cam. Everybody knew you were going to run the football, yeah. never knew, and they couldn't stop it. And that's what I love about my guys. I mean, those guys up front and Caden, they take a lot of pride in running the football. They've bought into this two tight end. They get excited, and that's what you like as an offensive coordinator. They like it when we get in two tight end. Now, I, I know our receivers do. don't, but we <laughs> like it up the side. This was the next play. Uh, we're just running a follow. It's a great job by Garrett. He's not going to get horse collared, so he's just going to baseball slide to protect his legs. Oh. This is a 44-yard gain. That's a great job by Victor. Uh, you can see him get to that middle backer. and just very, he's, he's, The more we've run this, the better he's gotten at finding a little seam in there. Yeah, and how pleasant have you been with his running ability? Oh, man, well, I, I've never doubted. I knew what the kid could do. I knew it. And he's just a tough kid. This is Garrett. Again, on the follow, you can see it. Uh, this was a six-yard gain, and this ended up being the touchdown uh, to put us up 29-14. to 14. Uh, We kind of really put it away. That's right. We scored the next play, uh, but this was a big play right here. It was first and goal at the 10, so that's tough. So this was a great uh, way to start uh, this first and goal situation. We got six yards, then we drew them off sides. And then we got the touchdown on second and goal at the two. Well, this, you know, as the offensive coordinator, this drive with a game in the balance got to make you feel good. Oh, that's two weeks in a row we've done that. We went 80 this week and the week before against Knoxville, we went 99. And uh, this is the field goal. Uh, this is Reese Altman, a 31-yard field goal. Uh, the kid has improved uh, – a bunch. He kicked a 42-yard field goal. He was two for two today at 42 yards today in practice. Wow. So I'm proud of that kid. He's worked his tail off. Last year he probably wasn't, you know, kicking anything over 35, and now he's, he, we could probably put him in for a 45-yarder and feel okay about it. Certainly a weapon, uh, Coach. Now we switch over to defense. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. West Monroe level. We were real proud of our, uh, like I said earlier, our defensive front, stopping the run. Right here you can watch uh, Andrew Gleason, number 47. He's getting a double team holding his ground right there. And number 94, uh, Ethan Swanner, is going to make the tackle. But watch uh, watch Andrew. He's going to be he's going to be he's getting the a, left defensive end. He's the end left here. defensive end. He's going to get a base block from the tight end. And there's going to be a puller that's going to come to kick him out. And he's actually going to melt that puller and hold his ground. So he's getting double teamed. He's getting double teamed. And then uh, Ethan's going to go down with the down block, and he comes backside right there. <laughs> that's, I mean, just that's pretty good. Yes, yeah, I see it right every day. There. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is number 34, Colton Harvey. He's going to make the tackle on the, on the quarterback sweep right there. Look at uh, the line of 90, scrimmage. Just number 94, back. Ethan, and number 92, Malcolm Moore. They're the two that uh, get the push up the field to force the quarterback to turn it back into wow. Colton. This is going to be, uh, Glenn talks about corners not tackling, but up top of the screen you got number 19, Noby Harris. Uh, he's, he's got that tight end man-to-man. -man. He's going to see uh, a hole open up and ball come in it, and uh, he's going to make the tackle. And it's, you know, you can't So really that's, see that's the, a corner. That's not a, a linebacker. Corner. No, huh? that's a cornerback. 
That's pretty good. Yes. That's pretty good. So you can see him up top. He's kind of wandering around. Where where is he supposed to go? Where is he supposed to go? And uh, on, you know, on a, it's hard to see on this copy, but the hole opens up, and he sees the back, and he just fires like a linebacker. Again, you're going to get a good push up front. They're not going to blow us off the line of scrimmage, and uh, he does a great job right he there. He certainly does. You know, we're going to. We always say, you know, we we can make a highlight film out of any one of these defensive linemen. Uh, this is going to be Ethan Swanner, number 94. He's at the right tackle up there. He's going to make a tackle for a loss right here. He's actually in a five technique, and, and he gets a pass and read, and he swats and swims him underneath and uh, makes the tackle in the backfield with help out of Luke Bell and Andrew Gleason, and uh, just a great job out of the defensive front again. That that loss of 20, 30 pounds has really helped him. Yeah, I mean, he's so much quicker. We were watching him uh, from last year's film, and he he was a little sluggish last year at this time, but he's he's playing fast football right now. He really is. They all are. They are all doing a great job. We just need to stay healthy. This is going to be a double team out of the two middle linebackers, uh, number forty-two Luke Bell and number forty-three Tanner Jordan. They're going to high-low this guy right here. <laughs> Luke's done a good job of stepping in for Chandler. Of course, he was playing a lot up until Chandler got hurt anyway, and uh, he's done a good job the other night in the game. Proud proud of him, proud for him. This little old quarterback speed option, quarterback keeps the ball. and Look, this guy's dangerous. What, what did he like? He lit up uh, Washtenaw for almost 200 yards on the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he sure did. It's going to be a pass breakup by Carson. He's the corner at the bottom of the screen, number 11. Uh, you know, they're trying to sneak a back out, and right at the last second, you know, he swats the hands, and uh, just a great play on his part. You know, in some years, when the flow would have gone away, that cornerback would have been across the field, and that guy would have been wide open. But Carson does a good job of staying home, staying disciplined, and uh, they sneak that half back. You can see him up there by the quarterback. They're going to try to sneak him out, and Carson does an excellent job. Right, yeah, well-designed right play. Yeah, very well-designed. Very well play. Designed. Just better defended. Yeah, that's uh, this is going to be a good pass rush from the front. Uh, you got Andrew at left end, Dalvin there at left tackle, Swanner 94 at the right tackle, and you got Dontrell Cobbs at the right end. It's just good, good pressure up front, and then that's Brooks Miller number four uh, comes up with the interception. But Brooks, Brooks is actually going to his man is going to run a, an out route down here by the, the, the 10 yard line. And when he sees the ball in there, he's just going to go get it. So you can see him down here at the bottom and then the ball's in the air and he just goes and gets it. He leaves his guy and says, Hey, yeah, I'm he's getting playing the ball. And that's what you want back there. Uh, number 34, Colton Harvey, uh, 47, Andrew Gleason. Colton's going to miss the quarterback. Dalvin's going to miss him, and then Colton, and Andrew, and uh, Dontrell Cobbs, number 91, are actually going to make the sack. It's going to be a 15-yard loss. Uh, Colton, you know, so he's still trying to figure out how to blitz, <laughs> how fast do I blitz, when do I blitz, and things like that. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to come a little harder on this one, and we told him it's okay to miss. Just get him moving, and then, you know, if you fall down, get back up. Get back he up, sure he did. did. He did. I tell you what, hemming up that quarterback wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. He it's is easy. an athlete. He is an athlete. This will be uh, Ethan Swanner, number 94 again. He's at the uh, left tackle position up at the top of the screen. He's going to beat the offensive tackle. Again, he's outside shade, going to beat him to the inside and uh, just pancakes the running back in the backfield for about a three-yard loss. What do you call that kind of block? That was old pancake. Uh, I thought it was a lookout block. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He missed him completely. Well, they ended up replacing that guy. They put a, a freshman in there, right? I At think that so. right tackle. Yeah. Wow. He wore that guy out. I, <laughs> I know that. This is going to be 99, Dalvin. You know, Dalvin, uh, he draws most of the double teams and even sometimes triple teams there at that nose guard. They know they got to block him, but he still makes plays for us. You can see him. He comes in the back door. He, he's slanting this way and sees the puller go that way, and he comes in the back door, and he's got a little help out of number 42, Luke Bell, on that tackle right there for a loss. <clears throat> this is going to be, uh, an, again, good pressure. This is going to come from both ends. 
You're going to have uh, Preston Crane, number 46, down here at the bottom. Well, he's been playing tight end. Uh-huh, and now he's playing a little defensive okay, end. Okay, okay. And you got uh, 47, Andrew Gleason. They're going to put tremendous pressure from the outside to force the quarterback to step up in the pocket, and then that's going to allow uh, Ethan Swanner to make the uh, sack for a six-yard loss. Just, you know, anytime you can get that guy stepping up, one of them inside tackles, they got to, you know, they got to be there to make the sack, and uh, Ethan – Ethan does a great job. It's like he's shot out of a shotgun right there at the end. Comes free and uh, wow, just great job. This will be uh, number 47, Andrew, at the top of the screen at defensive end, and number 34, uh, Colton Harvey, coming from the bottom side. Going to make a tackle for a loss of two. Good job by 99, Dalvin, uh, 94, Ethan, and 92. Great leverage. There's no push. You can see that we're actually pushing them back right there, and they're holding their gaps, doing a good job. This is going to be uh, – we got uh, Tanner Zordon down here at the bottom right. He's going to uh, be blitzing, and uh, he's going to get – So he's, he's lined up at almost a defensive, defensive end, end outside position, backer, huh? And uh, he's going to come off the outside, and he's going to get his, his first sack of the game, and that's going to be <laughs> uh, about a three-yard loss. A little excited. Three-yard loss. I love it when that defense gets to playing fast and getting excited. They're fun to watch. They are fun to watch. It's a good group of kids to coach. I promise you that. They make they make coaches look good. This is going to be Andrew, number 47, and Dalvin, 99, in the middle again. Uh, Andrew's playing the left end, and uh, Dalvin's in the middle. And they're going to get it. They're going to make a tackle right here for a loss on uh, 35. I mean, a uh, quarterback keeper. They run a little power read sweep. And the quarterback decides to keep it, and and uh, they both get in on that tackle. Yeah, I venture to say that Neville has never been held to minus yards rushing. Not since I've been here, and we've played them, they have it. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I just don't. I mean, I know the sacks, uh, you know, count, but uh, that's right. an incredible feat. Yes, it is. And that's not the first time we've held somebody to uh, negative yards, I believe, this year. Uh, I think we've done it one or two other the times. Too. Yeah. This is going to be another sandwich uh, duo tackle by the two linebackers. Uh, number 42, Luke Bell, he's showing blitz right there. And uh, 43, Tanner Zordon get on the sack together. And I, I believe that's uh, Luke's first sack of the year. That was a 13-yard loss. So you're getting those linebackers in on the sack party, we're huh? Getting, we're getting safeties in on the sack, <laughs> linebackers, defensive ends. Whatever I mean, Coach takes. Arledge, he's got all kinds of tricks he hadn't showed us yet. And this is uh, this is the same play. You can see we got no linebackers right there. We're just going to get him. And it's tough to block. You know, when we got that many people up there, it's tough to block. This is uh, number 47 again, Andrew Gleason, and uh, number 43, Tanner Zordon, in on the sack together. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Tanner had two sacks, and Andrew had three total. And uh, just a great job out of what, the watch, whole defense. Watch but, Gleason at the end. I don't know if you see it he's here a wolf, as well. It's, wolf his pat, it's his patented wolf call. Oh, is it really? <laughs> he, you know, he's got to give it up. <laughs> Well, Coach Arledge taught him that. Well, I tell you what, he may have taught him that, but I tell you, he's had plenty of opportunities to use it yes, this year. Yes. Well, most of them, if you know, he's he's when he tackles, he does a roll, and then he comes up, and the head goes up, and you know what's coming. Now, you know now what's I don't coming. know what he's saying. <laughs> I don't know if he's, how or, or what. But I'm going to have to ask him that the next yeah, time he's next on the time show. He's here. Uh, well, guys, uh, Again, congratulations on a great win, offense and defense. Thank put you, it together. George. And uh, best of luck Friday night against the Bearcats. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank All you. All right, we'll be back with more Inside Rebel Football. Stay with us. Your baby is precious. When she's sick, you want the best health care you can get for her. Bring her to Samson Family Medicine. Our medical professionals really care about your child and do a lot more than just help make them well. We offer immunizations and physicals. We treat premature newborns, ADD and ADHD. We do EKGs, lab work and x-rays, all in-house and a lot more. But it's our people that make the difference. Open seven days a week. Samson Family Medicine, 2309 Arkansas Road, West Monroe. Kilpatrick's provides guidance to create meaningful ceremonies to honor the life of your loved one. 
you'll receive exactly what you selected. Others may offer you one thing and provide another. Your family's interest is our first priority. We offer individualized services to fit any need. Kilpatrick's provides service, facilities, and prices second to none. Kilpatrick Serenity Gardens offers many beautiful settings. Choose wisely. Choose Kilpatrick's. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football and the final segment of uh, our show here in week six. And, and coach, before we, we go any further, now I, I've got a, uh, I got a text and I got to run this by you. I okay. hear that me and Rick might be out of a job. I got a text from Stanley saying you were hiring him full time. Well, I didn't tell him what for. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did. I, I do have some flooring that I need done. <laughs> did he and do the radio show? He tonight? did the radio okay. show and I told him what a great job. And I said, you know, uh, something to the effect that, uh, I might need to hire you, but I didn't tell him <laughs> for what for. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, he texted me. He said, look, yeah. I'm, I'm coming yeah. on board full time. He did, a, he, did a, he did a great job, just like you would expect him to do. Well, I appreciate him filling in. I know oh, Rick I appreciated too. it well yes, uh, indeed. as well. Uh, Stanley does a great job, and it's a lot of fun to have him. Uh, Coach, uh, kind of final thoughts as you look back on uh, Neville Westmoreau. Will we be playing these guys again next year? Well, uh, Coach and I have not talked. I'm talking about Mickey at uh, – McCarty at Neville, uh, I would I would like to continue it. Uh, uh, maybe maybe a different playing day, but he and I have not talked. I'm certainly in favor of it because I think it's great for our for our community on both sides of the river, and uh, it, it it the ball's in his court. I mean, it, I'd love to play it. The invitation's certainly there. Yeah. What about the crowd the other night? Oh, it was wonderful, wasn't it? Yes, I don't know what standing the, around. I don't know what the official count is. I don't know if we. I'm sure that we can come up with a count. But uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I looked up in those stands and I didn't see. I don't think I saw an empty seat in the in the, in the home side. There weren't many, if there Not were. Many. There wasn't. And uh, some folks uh, standing around the track and, and Neville brought a good contingent. It, well, just a great a great high school football game atmosphere. Well, the guy that came came uh, from the Great American Rivalry Series. Uh, you know, they they sent a representative down and they show the trophy at the, at, the, at the pep rally in the mornings and have a chin-up contest and a lot, of, a lot of other things. And uh, and then after the game's over, it makes the trophy presentation. And uh, I think he was pretty well, well impressed. I bet with he football. was.